Hi guys, Mr. Pulley here. Western Civilization, History of, right? Okay, chapters one through three, I did that as my introductory unit, calling it the Rise of Civilizations. Um, trying to adapt some old stuff from an old version of the text to a new version of the text. We'll see how it goes. Hope you guys can follow along. Before we get started, get out your study guide. Oh, you've already got it? Okay, sorry, never mind. Okay, you've got your study guide. As we go through here, feel free to stop me, pause me, mute me if you want to, but you're gonna find you can get a lot of your answers from your study guide, accomplished, finished, filled out right here, right now. So let's give it a shot, here we go. Okay, let's look at some of the first terms here. Prehistory, that's the history that happens before writing happens. Well, how do you have history without writing? If you can't write it down, you can't have that big boring book we talked about earlier. Okay, how do we do that? Pass the story on from generation to generation by telling it like a long-term game of telephone. Okay, or we just go back and look at stuff and try and figure out what was happening in history. Remember our puzzle we saw earlier? That's what I'm talking about, prehistory, okay? An anthropologist is someone who studies humanity and culture, tries to figure out by looking at that stuff what people did, how they lived, what they believed, what they thought, okay? Now, a paleontologist, this is what my youngest wants to be. She wants to study dinosaurs, but a paleontologist is someone who studies fossil remains. A paleontologist who studies dinosaur bones, studies dinosaur bones. You could study fossil remains of early hominids, early human forms, and be a paleontologist as well. Now, an archaeologist studies artifacts. Hey, so I'm going back and finding these things and studying them. So wait a minute, what are artifacts? Hey, artifacts down here, our last term on this page, objects shaped by human hands. Things that people take, early humans, and make into things like uh, you know, tools, stone axes, and later computers. Okay, so we're going back in time. How do we determine how old something is? We're gonna use a little technique called radiocarbon dating. Carbon-14 decays at a given rate that we know, and we use that to go back in living things, the things and determine how old these things were. Okay, early human life begins in the in Africa, not in the early human life begins in Africa. Okay, let's back this up here. <clears throat> uh, nope, let's uh, release this page. So, how do we go back and figure out how old something is? How do we determine its age? We use uh, an element called carbon 14, and we use what we call radiocarbon dating. We measure the amount of carbon 14 that's left, and what's left tells us how long ago this object was created or it, how old it is. Okay, Early human life begins in Africa, in the Olduvai Gorge, uh, in the Rift Valley in Africa, in Eastern Southern Africa. This is with the spot where scientists believe humans began. Okay, Early hominids were nomads, people who moved from place to place in search of food. Hunters, gatherers, moving around, following the food in terms of not only the animals, but the other things that animals eat that we ate as well, eat as well, plants, this makes us nomads. Okay, let's get going, got a long ways to go. Okay, human beginnings, okay. This is a couple of things we wanna look at here. This is the old stone age, the Paleolithic time period. This is a very simple tool, but as a tool, something, an artifact shaped by human hands, it's also a piece of technology. Not like the thing you're watching me on, but still technology anyway, okay. Neolithic Revolution, look how much more shaped and contoured and much more shaping is done on this tool compared to the tool over here. Okay, let's keep going. Okay, we're gonna use these tools for things like, oh, hunting big mastodons and mammoths and our early guys here. This is our thought of early humans on the edge of survival, um, having to kill large animals to eat. Well, mostly they're still eating plant life. They're mostly vegetarians. We're getting meat. This is dangerous. Look at the tusks on this guy. I mean, for goodness sakes. Okay. So one of the big changes in early human, human beginnings is what's called the Neolithic Revolution. Okay. This is simply the shift from gathering to producing food. Producing food. Hey, like the farms around us, we're farming now, agriculture. 
domestication, taking animals and taming them for human purposes. We might use them to pull our plows so we can have our agriculture. We might take them so we can use them for their milk, to have dairy products, to make cheeses, yogurt if you like that. Okay, things like that. Uh, dogs for protection and for hunting. Lots of things we can do with domestication. Okay? And then technological advances. We saw the Neolithic tool or versus the older Paleolithic tool. Okay, technological advances are things that happen once we have agriculture frees people up to do other tasks. When we're producing our own food, we now can produce more food than we need with a smaller amount of people. The other folks not needed in food production are now free to do other things, other tasks, and come up with other advances in technology. Okay. One of the things that shows in the book are these early kind of cave paintings. And the big question is, and a question on your study guide is, are these things for educational purposes? Are they for spiritual purposes? I'm going to argue that, in fact, these things are for, in fact, both. Okay. They might uh, be a reaching out to the spiritual gods. They might be instructional kind of video, video, you know, early videos, so to speak, showing us how what the animal looks like, how we're going to capture this and make our plan, like you know coaches do on chalkboards and stuff. But uh, in truth, scientists don't really know. This is just our best guess that it probably includes both of these things. Okay, moving on. <laughs> 